Hello, I'm Joseph. And before you go, I want to show you two cool things that I've done so far. So first, um, I moved over to SDL. That's not really the cool thing. But in doing so, I can actually drag in files. So I'm going to drag in my assets folder that has main.php that will go ahead and run the PHP script that's in there. So it doesn't include, it looks for main.php and we'll load that in. Um, so that's, that's nice. The other thing I can do is on the fly, make changes. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to 3000. So this will add an extra 2000 sprites. And then rather than making them, um, I don't know, perfect squares, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and multiply this by three. I could do it there, or I can actually have some typed information come back at me. So I can do sprite, size, uh, and then width, and then from here, do times equal. And that's because I'm having typed arrays. This is not supported in PHP, but PHP docs does support this. So I'm going to save it. There you go. Now I have a bunch of rectangles with regular squares because I have changed this over its runtime. Um, and it's remembering all the state previously versus now. And I can save this again. It's not going to do anything different because it already has well over a thousand sprites. It's over 3000 or add a 3000. The other thing I could do is, you know, the update logic that you see here moving every, every one of those little blocks. I can change the boundaries if I want to. So let's go ahead and change the boundaries. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change this down to 300 and see what that does. So you can see there, all these move within the 300 realm and the Y axis is kind of getting stuck here with that. Um, so pretty cool in that regard. Uh, you know, if I want to set the speed, I can go ahead and set the speed. And how is all this working? So I'll start to dive into that next. So first off, this is going to be hyper, hyperly, hyper, hyperly, hyper. <laughs> it's going to be a hyper specialized engine for PHP, meaning that an integer in PHP is a 64 bit integer. I will store 64 bit integers. I'm not going to be dropping down, trying to save memories in any way. Um, I'm okay with taking more memory because most 2d games don't need a lot of memory in the, in the first place. Okay. So with that said, um, everything is going to be based on primitives. What I mean by that? Well, when you give something to the engine, it's based on primitives, strings, integers, and floats. That's it. I don't need your classes. I don't need any of that stuff in the engine runtime. And by having all this primitive data that I'm attached to, uh, I can drop out the PHP runtime and reload it back up. So that's what you saw happening every time I do a save. So, you know, when I, again, when I go back up here and I, well, let's change this to, I don't know, uh, 300. When I, when I do this type of change, it is dropping out the entire runtime. It would be like you're restarting your PHP script, but all that state is saved in the engine and in any specialized data that you have, you save on your side, you decide on how you want to reload that. But PHP already has a really, really good way to reload that data and it's called serialize and unserialize. What, why I say that's cool because um, you can hook your own classes into these magic functions that you implement in your object. So if you have a database connection and it gets serialized and you go back to unserialize it, when it gets unserialized, you can just reconnect to the database or reconnect to your WebSocket. Um, that means I'm doing calls into specific functions that I require you, I expect you to implement. Obviously you don't need wake and sleep. That's not a requirement, but like the update is. So all this means is that there's a complete separation from the runtime and your actual code. So not only do you get really awesome um, library loading, you also get the ability to do unit testing uh, up the wazoo because you're no longer bound to some specific API. It's just data. It's a data in a PHP array, not any specific classes. And that makes things like mocking data really freaking easy. Uh, if you want to do your object oriented stuff, you can still do that. As long as your class um, uh, uses the sprite trait, then when you're doing manipulation on the sprite, you can pass that back in and I will read in the sprite information as it needs to. So you can technically chuck in classes to my to the engine and then the engine will look for the trait and as long as the traits implement it, we'll go ahead and do that. And if you look at the trait, you see that it implements two array. So I would just call two array. Nothing really special there. Uh, in terms of tracking data for like dirty data and stuff like that, uh, I'm this is not going to really start out with it. It's just really going to chuck all of sprite all over again. So if you want like hyper specialized um, like what this is doing here, where it's only taking the position and updating the position, uh, then you can do that there. So yeah, you see type of here, it's there for a reason. There would be certain types of events that you're sending into the engine. What do I mean by all this? Well, a type will note 
uh, denote the data that it's going to consume and what it's going to do. So type zero is add sprite, type one is to change sprite, and this will make it very easily to add in additional PHP runtimes across multiple cores. And when you want to message those different individual uh, runtimes, then you can do that. I'll have like type, I don't know, whatever, seven, and that type seven will always go to runtime number two or something like that. And then you can set up runtime number two to run in an event loop. You can use that event loop to have maybe have like a WebSocket connection to your networking that way. And then how do you talk back to your main update loop back in your other runtime, basically your other processor, you would do uh, a message. So you would send a message over and then I would take that message and pipe it to not necessarily the update, but there would be another function you would implement called like frost event or something like that, that you'd, you know, get these events to come in and you decide how you want to deal with them, whether you want to, you know, do the update right there and then, or wait till you get to your update loop to actually process that data. So that gives me a lot of opportunity. It's very much like if you've ever worked with Defold, if you've ever worked with Love2D, if you've ever worked with Dra Dragon Ruby, these are all t these type of systems where uh, it's, very minimal in terms of what you would uh, kind of need to do with the engine, but the engine takes the care of a lot of this stuff for you. So really cool in that respect. And again, I, I, once I get BGFX back in here, it'd be really nice. This is a completely sandboxed application. This means you can go to iOS, you can go to Android, go to Mac and iPad, and go to Windows and Linux uh, without any issue in terms of worrying about, you know, I can't deploy this because it's not a sandbox, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm thinking about this all up front. So this way, when I want to hit the, all these target platforms, I definitely can. The only catch right now is this will be only 64-bit compatible, which means that Raspberry Pi may suffer in terms of support. And I could change that. The bigger issue, it really has to do with the hash ID um, that I would have to drop into like rather than carrying two 64-bit integers, I need to carry over like four 32-bit integers. Um, not a hard thing to do uh, or to implement, but then every number that I do, I also need to think about. And obviously, if you're using these very high numbers on a 64-bit system, they're not going to work when you switch down to a 32-bit, as you would expect. So beyond that, not much else to say. I, it's cool that this is here. Uh, it makes it so much easier for me to work on for the back end. Uh, I have such a small layer of functions to actually implement and work on than I did previously with something like Rayla PHP, where I'm, I'm dealing with 400 plus functions. I need to review, test, inspect, um, and then you're dealing with the while loop. So things like live reloading becomes much more difficult, much more complicated. Uh, and you know, when you want to send in maybe a configuration change to resize a window or something like that, all the SDL has recovered. There's all this other stuff in there. You want to enable vSync, disable vSync. You can pass an event to change a setting or something like that. So it, it minimizes the, um, kind of overall arcing issue that I've had previously, which is trying to mirror the data from the back end to the front end of the runtime of PHP and knowing that there's not a real connection there. It's all hidden. It's all copying data back and forth anyways. And so by providing an event system in the first place, that's all data driven, makes it super easy to maintain.